welcome to lecture 54. In this week 11, we are talking about various applications of optimization. In today's lecture, we will talk about two different applications. The first application is taken from chemical reaction engineering and we will talk about a CSTR problem. In the next example, we will talk about a transportation problem. So, let us start with first problem. So, for the CSTR problem, the problem is as follows. For a given product specification, what should be the volume, feed rate and the reactor concentration, so that the total operating cost is minimized. So, we are going to solve an optimization problem related to continuous start tank reactor. So, there is a reaction taking place for a given product specification, what should be the volume feed rate and the reactor concentration, so that the total operating cost is minimized. Of course, we will be given some components of the operating cost. So, let us now define the problem in more details. A feed stream carrying only reactant A with concentration C A 0 mole per meter cube enters a CSTR with volumetric feed rate F meter cube per hour and undergoes a first order reaction such as A to B. The rate of formation of B is given as R B equal to K into C A, where R B is the rate of formation of B, K is the reaction rate constant and the value of the reaction rate constant K is given as 0 0.1 hour inverse and C A is the concentration of A in the reactor in the unit of mole per meter cube. We want to produce 10 moles per hour of B. So, this is the product specification. We want to produce 10 mole per hour of B and the cost of this operation per hour can be expressed as a sum of two cost components, cost of feed A and cost of utility that depends on the CSTR volume and the expression is the total operating cost in say rupees per hour is 5 into C A 0 into F plus 0.3 into V. So, the first word 5 into C A 0 into F is the component corresponding to cost of feed A and the next part corresponds to the cost of utility and it depends on the CSTR volume. So, the cost depends on the feed rate, the volume of the reactor and of course, the initial concentration of A in the feed stream. Note that C A 0 into F is basically moles of A that is entering per hour. So, if the initial concentration of A is given as C A 0 equal to 0 0.04 mole per meter cube we have to find the minimum cost of operation. So, how do we solve this problem? So, the problem is that you have a CSTR where a simple first order reaction such as A to B takes place. The reaction rate constant is given as 0 0.1 hour inverse. We want to produce 10 moles per hour of B. 
So, the total operating cost is the cost of feed plus utility cost that depends on volume. So, if we fix the initial concentration of A in the feed stream as 0 0.04 moles per meter cube, what will be the minimum cost of operation? So, in order to minimize the cost of operation, we need to determine the optimal values of reactor volume V, the feed rate F and the concentration of A in the reactor that is C A which is this. Note that this is CSTF. So, the concentration of A in the reactor is same as the concentration of A in the exit stream. Formulate a constant optimization problem to determine optimal values of B that is volume of reactor F the feed rate and C A the concentration of A in the reactor or in the exit strip. So, to define or formulate the constant optimization problem, we have to use mass balance equations on A and B to formulate these constants. So, if we apply mass balance equations on A and B, we will be able to formulate these constants. Note that in the CSTF, a feed stream containing only A with a specified concentration comes in, a reaction takes place and the exit stream has the same flow rate as the inlet stream. So, the volume remains constant. So, we can write down the mass balance equation on A and mass balance equation on B. We have a constraint on the product specification. So, considering this we will have two mass balance equations which will correspond to the two constants. Then we will write down or formulate the objective function and these two constants will lead to a constant optimization problem which can be solved using say Lagrange multipliers method. So, let us see how we formulate the problem first. Mass balance is nothing but a statement such as accumulation equal to input minus output. So, the mass balance on A will be accumulation of A which is 0 because it is a CSTR, we consider steady state operation. So, accumulation is 0. So, and then input, input is the amount of A that is coming in to the reactor. So, that is C A 0 into F minus output. So, there are two terms, one is A goes to B. So, that causes depletion in A and also a goes out with the exit stream. So, the depletion of A due to reaction will be R A into V. Note that R A will be same as R B which will be equal to K into C A and the amount of A that goes out with the exit stream is flow rate into concentration. So, F into C A. So, we are able to write this first equation which 
can be rearranged to this. So, this gives me the mass balance equation on A. Similarly, you can write the mass balance equation on B. Again, the accumulation of B is 0. Then, input of B is same as formation of B. So, that is R B V because B is being formed from A due to the reaction A to B. And then B goes out with the exit stream. So, that will be F the volumetric flow rate into the concentration. So, R B V minus F C V is the mass balance equation for component B. So, for R B let us put K into C A or 0.1 into C A. So, I get this term and F C B is the amount of B that is going out with the exit stream. Let us look at the unit. So, F is volumetric flow rate. So, meter cube per hour and concentration is mole per meter cube. So, F C B is mole per hour. So, F into C B moles per hour is basically we will set it to 10 because we want to produce 10 moles per hour of B. So, that is why F C B is being set as 10 to meet the product specification. So, this leads to this equation for mass balance on B. So, we now have two mass balance equations on A and B respectively. So, these are two constants. So, let us now formulate the optimization problem formally. First, the objective function we want to minimize the total hourly cost of operation, which is given as 5 C A 0 into F plus 0.3 V subject to the mass balance equation on A mass balance equation on B. And what are the decision variables? The decision variables are V, F and C A. So, this is the optimization problem that we have to solve. So, basically we have an optimization problem with two equality constants. So, I can formulate the Lagrangian function. The objective function then Lagrange multiplier into the first constraint and then another Lagrange multiplier into the second constraint. So, we have the Lagrangian function. So, let us now apply the first order necessary condition for optimality which is the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to all the state variables and the Lagrange multipliers will be equal to 0. So, del L del F will be equal to 0, del L del V will be equal to 0 del L del C A will be equal to 0 and also del L del lambda 1 equal to 0, del L del lambda equal to lambda 2 equal to 0. So, then I get 5 equations. These conditions gives me a set of 5 equations which needs to be solved simultaneously to find out volume, flow rate, 
concentration and of course, you will also get lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, you have now 5 equations, these are simultaneous equations which we can solve using the MATLAB function f solve. You know that f solve solves an equation such as f x equal to 0, f x equal to 0 represents a set of simultaneous equations which may be nonlinear equations and you are now familiar with the syntax for f solve. You have to define a function where you will write down all these simultaneous equations, you will supply the initial guess and you can also supply options as argument to give specific instruction to the solver f solve. So, this is the MATLAB code that you can use. We define a function known as CSTR Lagrangian, which defines all the equations that needs to be solved simultaneously. And then we give a guess value, initial guess value, we define options and then call f solve. So, you define a function, give the name CSTR underscore Lagrangian or whatever name you want. So, you create an m file. So, the file will have extension dot m and then these statements either you can enter on a script file or enter on the command mode. If you write a file, you give some name to it, save it as dot m file and then run the file. If you run, you will get these as solutions for flow rate, volume and the concentration of A. So, this will correspond to the minimum hourly cost of operation, which for this case is 11,872.9 rupees per hour. So, this is how you can solve the given optimization problem related to hourly cost minimization of a CSTR when a target product specification is given. So, next problem we take is optimization of transportation cost. Consider a manufacturing company, it produces a product and it has three warehouses in P, Q and R. And then there are seven distributors. So, there are 7 distributors warehouses in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So, the manufacturing company delivers a product from its 3 warehouses in P, Q, R to 7 distributors warehouses in A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We have to minimize the total cost of operation. 
of course the cost of transportation from p q r to each of these seven distributors will be given we have already discussed that such problems will lead to a linear programming problems and matlab's linprog can be used to solve such problem so matlab's linprog solves an objective function f transpose x where f transpose or f vector contains the cost coefficients and the constants are ax less or equal to b which are linear inequality type constant and e equality x equal to b equality which is linear equality type constants and then lower bounds on the decision variables so if you can cast your problem in this form you can solve using the solver lin prog and a given linear programming problem you will be able to solve you will be able to cast in the format specified so now let us look at the data associated with the transportation problem the shipping costs of a product from company's warehouse to different distributors warehouses are given in the table you now see on the screen so you have to read as the cost of shipping from p to a is 15 so this is the unit of cost in any unit of cost that is the rupees or dollar unit of cost so that is 15 p to b it is 160 and so on and so forth similarly q to a is 160 q to d is 410 and so on and so forth similarly from r to a will be 100 r to g will be 160 and so on and so forth so the total data of shipping of a product from company's warehouse to different distributors warehouses are given the next the demand at all the seven distributors warehouses are given so there are seven distributors warehouses and each warehouse has a demand associated with it and these are given then the companies three different warehouses have different capacity for storage so they are also specified so companies three warehouses storage capacity are specified seven distributor warehouses demands are given and cost of the product from company warehouse to each of the distributors warehouses are given so you have to solve the linear programming problem to find the optimal quantity of product to be delivered to each distributors warehouse so that the total transportation cost will be minimum so we have to formulate a linear programming problem and solve the problem to find out what is the optimal quantity of product to be delivered to each distributors warehouse from companies warehouses so that the total transportation cost is minimum so this is a standard linear programming problem so the shipping cost are again shown in the table 
So, PQR are the company warehouses and these are the distributors warehouses. So, the variables for the problem are the quantity of the product that needs to be shipped from three company warehouses to seven distributors warehouses. So, we have 3 into 7 equal to 21 decision variables. So, those are x 1, x 2 up to x 21. So, now let us look at this table. So, this table allows us to define the constants. We have two types of constants. One is the storage and the other is the demands. So, let us say the demands are exactly to be satisfied. So, we can write like x 1 plus x i plus x 15 So, this corresponds to x 1 quantity received from company warehouse P, x 8 quantity received from company warehouse Q and x 15 quantity received from company warehouse R. So, the distributor warehouse in A receives x 1 plus x 2 plus x 15. So, this should be greater or equal to the demand at distributors A. Let us say we are first we are first saying that the demands will be exactly met. So, the quantity that is received in A will be equal to the demand at A. So, we will write x 1 plus x 8 plus x 15 is equal to 11 So, x 1 plus x 8 plus x 15 is equal to 11 Note that we can also write greater or equal to 1168. Similarly, you can write down the constants for all the 7 warehouses. So, this is for demand. Now, each company warehouse are limited or fixed storage specified storage capacity. So, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6 and x 7, this goes out from companies warehouse P to 7 distributors warehouses. So, some of these x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5, x 6 and x 7 must be less or equal to the storage capacity of company warehouse A. So, that is why we write this first constant. Similarly, we write second constant as well as third constant. So, we have a linear programming problem where these storage capacity constants are satisfied as less or equal to and the demand constants are being satisfied as equal to. The demand constants can also be formulated as greater or equal to and you will get the same solution. So, now you can 
use the Lin-Proc solver of MATLAB. So, the cost coefficients as shown in the table are written as f vector. Then this is the matrix for the inequality constants, this is for the equality constants and then you call the Lin-Proc solver. So, the solution you obtain is as follows. So, these are the solutions all 21. Note that the equality constants, the demand we specified as equality constants are exactly satisfied. Similarly, the storage capacity constants are also satisfied. So, this is how we can solve a transportation problem by formulating as a linear programming problem and using the Lin-Proc solver of MATLAB. With this, we conclude lecture 54 here.